Funding Month, presented with Oracle for Startups and American Express, recognizes the stories, lessons learned, and best practices shared by founders and funders around the world. Welcome to this uh, SG Virtual, our third one in April, which is our funding month. And also welcome to Startup Ryan, the world's largest community of startups, founders, innovators, and creators. And today we have really two uh, founders, innovators, and creators who will share with us their success and their path. And just to remind all of you that the mission, our mission, I mean, here at Startup Grind, we would like to give startups everywhere the education and opportunities they need to build, grow, and scale their ventures. Because we believe in making friends and not contacts. You know, we believe also in giving first, not taking. And finally, we believe in helping others before helping yourself. So that's why we would invite you to, in the chat box, tell us what you are looking for, how eventually we could assist you and uh, also the community and all how you eventually could assist other uh, grinders. And also use the chat box to ask your questions or the Q and A feature uh, to ask your questions to our fireside chatters. So, but now without further ado, I would like to introduce our fireside chatters per excellence today, which are Frédéric Stirnon and Alain Tayen. We met in uh, previous lives. So first of all, welcome Frédéric and Alain, welcome. Thank you. Hello. Thank you, Steve. Hi, everyone. So, first of all, I mean, in order to set a little bit uh, the scene, probably a lot of the users know or use your services at Carper DM, PayDM, sorry. But uh, what is Carper DM? How would you describe it? It doesn't matter. I'll, I'll take it on. <laughs> uh, so Carpe Diem is, is a mobile fueling experience enabler. Uh, we have built a platform that allows every mobile app or connected car to activate any fuel pump and allows the driver to uh, take the fuel and pay automatically from his mobile or directly from the dashboard of his car. And uh, we allow also marketing interactions between the drivers and the fuel retailers, which is a part of the value that we bring to the to the solution. Uh, uh, the, actually, the service is linked to the driver, if I'm uh, understanding well. It's not linked to the car itself. It is. It is. It is linked to both. Actually, uh, it is linked to the device. The device could be a phone or could be a car. Uh, to a driver and to his method of payment. And this is allowing the uh, authentication, the, the identification of the customer and allowing him to activate the pump and pay automatically from the device. But how did you get the idea to offer to this service? I mean, uh, did you, uh, because I know, okay, you have experience in the financial, in the payments industry, the mobile payment industry. Uh, in the previous experience, but how that, does the, did the idea pop up for offering car pay DM services? Um, so be, before to launch car pay DM, uh, I, I was part of, a, of another venture that was called uh, Flashies. It was a mobile payment solution where we tried to create a payment solution that would work everywhere in every mer merchant places. Uh, from, from pharmacy to restaurant to parkings and so on. And we were trying to, to um, uh, actually uh, create a community of users and a community of merchants. We had not a lot of traction at that time and the company ended uh, after a few years. And then uh, the, the ambition was to recreate something that was in line with mobile payment, but to, to manage it and to reach success, which is what we were looking for. Uh, uh, the idea was to find a place where actually 
uh, drivers will have a recurrent user, usage of, of the solution. And uh, fuel is uh, a very recurrent usage. As soon as you have a car, you have to fill it up. And uh, so uh, it was decided to, to go in this, in this direction. Uh, how did you uh, start about it? I mean, okay, the idea, the the need, you saw it, and how did you go about it? I mean, uh, the team initially was it uh, you two were were others? Uh, how did you set the team together? Actually, the team was was, was very very uh, fast, uh, very rapidly. Uh, launching a startup alone is something that is. At least I feel very, very complex. And if you don't have the, the right partner with complementary uh, competencies, uh, it's, it's really, really hard. Also, to have the possibility to, to make a step back and have someone to discuss with, it's, it's important. And uh, then, actually, this is where, uh, with, with Alain, we started. Um, in, after, after two or three months, Alain joined, joined the, the, the adventure. And, uh, Hopefully, it was there <laughs> because we don't have the same mindset. We don't see the same things at the same time, and and it, it's yeah, making it with two people is probably the best thing that that uh, we, we we decided. And as and as you can see, I'm a good listener. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the 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 idea the idea was obviously you know Fred coming from this mobile payment world and experience. And taking an existing ecosystem, which is you know there for many many years, you know which is the, the fueling, uh, the fueling thing, and putting all this together, you know because sooner or later most of the payment will happen through you know a device, whether the device is the mobile phone like it is now, or ultimately the vehicle when it comes to fueling, but it will be a device, it could be a ring or whatever we, you know whatever sort of a science fiction things that we can see, but the the uh, that idea is was that the the, the, the the, the, the beauty of the idea was uh, not to build an app, was to basically connect into communities. And uh, that was the, the real uh, thing in, in Carpe Diem. And uh, that's the only innovative sort of thing, because again, fueling a car or paying with a mobile is not innovative. But uh, inserting a service or integrating a service into an existing community was the clever piece of it. So uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was an interesting experience from the beginning. Uh, for, right from the beginning, I mean, did you have the tools to offer the services or was the the idea about devising the service and then you were looking into the tools? How did you go about that one? I think the founding principles in terms of, you know, how we, you know, uh, taught Carpe Diem was first to to, to focus on or to keep internally three uh, pillars, if you wish. The first is uh, everything that relates to uh, uh, our intellectual property, so building the solution. And we've internalized that development, so with, with developers, uh, building the, the platforms from scratch, having in uh, as an objective uh, performance and scalability. That was the two, because these are the two elements which will turn this into a success. Um, the, the second pillar is uh, customer acquisition, so all the sales uh, and marketing team, you know, also internally, and then uh, the, the customer success team. So the third pillar is to make sure that we uh, make every every customer happy, because performance is good, but the uh, the overall user experience is also uh, critical. So those three pillars are, are internal. All the other functions have been externalized, and the so in terms of tools, it's more. I would probably more talk about the resources because you know we've built uh, everything from scratch on the basis of that team on those three pillars which are now the Carpe Diem uh, team and we've you know very simply uh, optimized every other function so that from an operational point of view we can operate remotely so you know for us this stupid period that we are currently uh, experiencing is uh, does not affect at all how we operate because we are absolutely uh, we can operate remotely without any problem, and because we've externalized a lot of those admin, you know, or boring operational functions. So, um, the, the the I would say the key word for for Carpidium is is probably uh, efficiency. That's what I that's that's how I would call it. Um, efficiency at every level, outside for the clients, for us uh, uh, at every level. 
and uh, you just mentioned it okay you went about it and but with which resources did you start because in as you said you did a lot in-house and also from scratch uh, how did you fund it i mean uh, the question is uh, we are in funding months that's why i'm putting the question on the table uh how did you go about that actually what we did is uh we raised fund we raised fund uh, we made the first uh, uh, capital increase of uh, 300,000 euro cash and 2,000 euro in, in uh, industry. So we had a partner that, or we had a few partners that actually participating in in uh, uh, showing that the, the, the concept was vi viable and technically feasible. Uh, and uh, then we we had success. Uh, we we had a, a additional uh, funding rounds. Um, uh, after afterwards, with with different uh, uh, investors com coming in, first first round was was mainly uh, family, friends, and certainly fools, uh, like like in in lots of of, of startups, uh, and uh, we we also made uh, an approach that was quite um, uh, conservative. I mean. We raised funds and we said we will do this with this money. We will do this and reach that point. When we will be there, we will need additional money to go the next step. And this is also showing to the to the shareholders that actually we are not spending the money to do any, um, anything. We we are to do everything. We 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 show the plan and we try to execute accordingly, which is, I believe, something that was uh, positive for them as well. Yeah, because you know Fred, Fred is, does excel in in, uh, in in fundraising, and as he said, you know uh, every every round of funding was basically targeted uh, was underpinned by uh, by deliverables, you know round after round after round. Which and it's that's quite notable is that if there's quite a number of uh, business angels who have followed us all along the journey, they have repeatedly you know increased their um, their investment, uh, but also, you know, we've been able to attract some uh, absolutely fantastic entrepreneurs uh, from the uh, Luxembourg community. And, uh, you know, we have, you know, ex CEO of big five companies, we have founders of extremely large asset servicing companies, uh, and, and some of them are uh, directors or member of our boards. And uh, so, so uh, that was a, a very successful journey from that point of view. And then I suppose Fred will 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 probably also co uh, talk about the uh, uh, the industrial shareholder who joined us last July. Yeah, after so we made we made four different investment round. Uh, I would say alone, where we we had the first uh, so the solution in, in in production showing that we are able to manage big and huge volumes of transactions, and then we had to really accelerate. And, and change in dimension, and uh, we uh, discussed with a, a very very large group called Eden Red. Uh, Eden Red is uh, actually the second largest fuel buyer in the world. Uh, they, they buy something like 7.6 billions of liters of fuel every year, and uh, they decided to uh, to invest into Carpedium, which is uh, helping us in terms of, of market positioning uh, strengths on the on the on the on the on in this ecosystem uh, and that is also opening us a lot of doors in countries where we were not expecting to go uh, so so quickly so yeah the, the the strategic path if i may our strategic path is 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 dual um i know fred loves when i start you know uh, doing, <laughs> you know because you know, on the one hand, we have to have a coverage, and that's a, a, a fuel station coverage across Europe because Europe is our focus. And the more the, the more dense that network is, the better it is, of course, because it means that our users will have the possibility to refill in many many stations across many countries. And and that was the dimension that was sort of ticked when uh, we uh, we brought in uh, in and read into the uh, the equity because of those. Uh, you know the fact that they are or their subsidiary UTA in Germany is connected to 57,000 stations across Europe. The other dimension is the are the, basically the communities, uh, which when we basically bring one on top of the other, generate revenue for us. 
And uh, so we are now very much active on uh, bringing those communities and they can be, you know, uh, mobile banking apps, which are already converted to mobile payment. They could be um, communities linked to mobility, you know, large road assistance through GPS, sat nav, but they could also be uh, vehicles, so car makers. And we are currently integrating our service into, into the cars, uh, which is basically the device of the future. And uh, that probably guarantees as well a long-term future for, for CarPDM, because if we are present in the cars right now, we'll probably be there for a long time. That's interesting. Uh, there are already some questions popping up and I will try to integrate them in our discussion a little bit. And there's always a question is, okay, when you start, you are the founders or the three Fs. And then as you also explained, you went uh, by steps, step by step, and then you got resources and so on. And how did you deal the dilution aspect of the shares? I mean, uh, with each step, event, if, except if you are very strong, <laughs> And also put your, uh, yourself again uh, something in, you will be dil diluted. Or was that not a concern for you? Uh, I would say it, it, it was a concern, but it's part of the game. Uh, if you want to reach the success, you 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 need to be able to or to be able to share the, the success because you need the others to to, to succeed. Uh, the question is is to find the right balance between. Uh, what what you are ready to to uh, actually it's based also on the value of the of the company so it's uh, you, you raise some funds and and you leave yes you leave you leave some or you you are diluted but without this this money you are you have more chances to to fail so uh, yeah it's it's a it's a uh, trade off between uh, having the, the resources to to reach the success and and leaving something on the table but it's good for the business i would say but alain wants to react yeah no there's there's also an, a, a dimension to to dilution which is not only financial you know as as i just mentioned before the the fact that we've attracted a partner like it and ready to our equity is basically you know taking us five years ahead in terms of our roadmap because you know if we would ever basically taken our backpack and you know and go uh, after those 50 Seven thousand or even thirty thousand stations across Europe. It would have taken years to do that. I mean, UTA took them seventy years to get to fifty-seven thousand, right? So, you know, <laughs> I know that time is collapsing, but still. So, so you know, this operation by itself, uh, of course, dilutive, but you know, it it, it basically propelled us into uh, into the future in terms of the roadmap, which which was definitely worth it. So that's also an element of. Uh, you know, is is you know, you you can be stronger if you are you are you are more than uh, just you know uh, yourself or a couple of people sitting on pile of shares. You know, it's uh, it's it's all about securing the future. And then uh, coming a little bit back or in between uh, those phases, how was it? How did how hard was it when you? started or kicked off to convince your clients the first clients was it an easy play game play or did it take really uh, longer than you expected you, well, you I think the, the first the first clients came after two years right well maybe so the, the company was created you know let's say end of 16 so beginning of 17 our solution was sort of ready uh, or it went in production in Jan 19. And so our first client signed a contract somewhere in October, I think October 18 or ish. So, so uh, it didn't take much time to convince them. Um, and uh, uh, so it's, it's not arrogance, it's just time. Um, and then, you know, we, we quickly or, uh, went uh, uh, from Belgium to Luxembourg and now, we, you know, into France. And we, we hope that, you know, uh, by the end of the, the year, we will add at least Germany and Italy with certainty and possibly um, Spain for the for the uh, most or the largest countries. But we also all already have opportunities to go, you know, uh, Central Europe. And, you know, uh, we have uh, uh, thousands of stations opportunities across Central Europe as well. So the 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 the, the, the 
I believe, enfin, we believe that uh, we are not adding a, a, a payment method or another payment solution, right? It's not what we are doing. What we are doing is lead generation. We bring business to uh, to the few retailers and we give them the possibility to know their driver and to treat them well and 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 bring them where they where where they want to go or where they want them to go. And and that's an original. That's definitely an original positioning, which is very uh, uh, successful with the with the few retailers. I must say. So. Um, uh, and and we still have so many things to do, of course. But but uh, convince to convince the few retailers is is not is not the uh, the, the most difficult part. Yeah, the, the the first the first customer we we had what we call the chicken and egg issue. We we had the technology to connect to the stations, and uh, when we went to to when we were meeting the few retailers, they say yeah, you we, we could work together. But when when you will have users. And when, when we were discussing with with the community, they said, "Yeah, we can work together." But when we when you, when you will have fuel stations, and and so there is a, a time uh, matching that that happened, and this started the whole stuff. And when it started, actually, uh, we, we we executed as as expected. That's quite interesting, and a little bit coming back to what you were saying. I mean. Did you, from the beginning, have the, the, let's say so, the, did you know that for offering your services, you were addressing the right target, or did you adapt your target uh, over the time uh, over developing? I, th I think if, if uh, while Fred is, you know, seems to be thinking hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, we 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 had a sort of a we had a sort of a fork. I mean, this B two B, so uh, connecting to or, or partnering with uh, uh, the fuel card issuers like UTA, like we've just mentioned, that partnership became obvious to us along the way. So it was not uh, you know by design from the very beginning. You know, when we were basically uh, uh, engaged on this on this journey. We realized that by uh, uh, the partnering with those guys, we could accelerate and, and collapse the time in terms of uh, network acquisition, fuel network acquisition. So that was the major fork that we that we went, and that's back into the, the late uh, 2018 that we said, you know, we will we'll probably need to, uh, uh, to to talk to these people and see if they could be interested to partner. And then a partnership, you know, resulted into you know an investment, as it is usually the case. Um, so that that was a, a major discovery along the way, I would say. Yes, that was our major discovery. For the rest, we are pretty much executing along the roadmap and and the plans that we uh, that we had. Well, I mean, we had to tweak. We also because we are a digital marketing organization, uh, we are not you know payment. We don't do. We support, and uh, it's really digital marketing that we do. And we also discover because di digital marketing is exploding and. You know, completely changing all along with this. You know, everything that happens with the with those social networks thing. We also discover a lot and learn a lot, and uh, and we also see that we uh, we can even bring more than what we thought from the beginning. So that's very interesting too. There's a, one question a little bit linked to that. What you were also saying is uh, the, your clients. I mean, it's uh, your B two B. Your clients did they uh, use when they used your service? Did are, were they immediately grasping the added value of your service, or did it take some time? And as you said, I mean, you were learning along the road with them what they are looking for and so on. Um, how was that? Because that's also uh, the question is okay. How difficult was it uh, to get uh, to convince them and to get them to use it correctly? Because you are using a serve, uh, offering a service, which is between quotation marks, an added value, an obvious, but so far it hasn't been done, and uh, that's why the question came. The, the, I would say there are two two parts for for to to, to answer this question. Uh, the value we we bring is is. We believe obvious, at least for the drivers, at, at, at the start for the drivers, because when they start using the service, we see a 90% recurrence usage, meaning that when you start using it, you continue to use it. So it means that it gives you something. 
positive, I mean. <laughs> Um, on the other side, uh, the marketing platform that we bring to the fuel retailers is also something that is uh, in use and that shows strong results. I mean, the fuel retailers are able to target profile of users and uh, display them specific or provide them with specific uh, discounts on fuel prices depending on their profile. And we see that every time there is a campaign, there is an increase of the usage because the targets uh, set by the fuel retailers help actually to activate the, the usage of the service. So this proof that what the, the tools that we've been uh, that we have implemented between the drivers and the fuel retailers uh, provide the, the right value to the drivers because they use it and to the fuel retailers because every time they communicate with the drivers it increases the usage. Yeah, it, which and, and uh, just on the. Um, uh, the did the customer realize the value? It was funny because our first customer, I mean, there's no secret, it's Colroyd with the DAX 24 stations in Belgium. And, and, and really these guys have basically contracted with us more like, a, you know, let's do a test. You know, I mean, they are innovators, you know, I mean, they are innovators. Certainly they were, they have a lot of uh, liquid gas stations. They are already into hydrogen. So, so they said, let's do a test. And they were absolutely astonished by the response like us, actually, I mean, we we will we have basically you know uh, exceeded 1.3 million transactions now after two years of production and one year of COVID. So uh, um, they were absolutely amazed by the by the result. So our experience was like we've we've basically experienced the before and the after of mobile payment into fuel stations because when we started to tour the the, the fuel networks, there was not a lot of contenders. There was not a lot of uh, uh, similar experience life or, or even used i mean they, we had a, a competitor in holland um, there was some sort of initiative in uh, in spain but there was nothing and now we see that there are a lot of companies structured uh, that are we have uh, uh, created so far, or we have experienced a competitive landscape and it's very interesting because again our positioning as a digital marketing platform is unique the others would take a probably more like a mobile payment anyway. so so that 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 was very interesting to see the the evolution in such a short period of time and then, uh, I mean, you touch upon it uh, because there are some questions coming in uh, about the competition or the market, uh, the competitive landscape. Your services do, uh, does the users know that you are providing the services or is it uh, maybe white label or is it branded from the retailer? No, I mean, our clients, don't, the, the end user, they, they don't see Carpe Diem. That's a very good point. Um, you know, because we work through through communities, the um, if you are in Luxembourg, you will you will use the Bill app to uh, and soon another one to um, uh, to access the stations. If you are in Belgium, you will have that's twenty four Belfuse and others. Um, so so they don't know about uh, so the end user don't know about Carpedium, and and that's okay. You know, I mean, uh, uh, what what we do in essence does not expose us to the uh, wider audience. And on the other hand, uh, there's a que also a question coming in is you also uh, one also notice that the retailers themselves try to create some uh, I'll call it point system or uh, loyalization or valuation systems for their users and so on. Uh, you get everywhere you get now a card um, uh, or uh, which is also digital <clears throat> each time. I mean, you go to the gas station of that brand, you show it and then it's put on it and so on. Um, is that something <clears throat> which you see as complementary or more like between quotation mark a threat? I mean, is it an opportunity or a threat for you? That's Fred's baby, so <laughs> just sit back and relax and listen. <laughs> no, it's 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 clearly clearly an opportunity uh, because there are different kind of, of fuel networks and uh, some of them have big machines to manage loyalty. Some others have almost nothing unless a punch card in in, in, in paper. Um, and with this kind of cards, they don't have any access to the customers. They don't know when the cart is, is gone. It's, it's back to the station and they get a, I don't know, a car wash or a sandwich. They even don't know the, the they don't have any way to, to reconnect with the customer and so on. Uh, so for us, um, 
loyalty is, is certainly something that, that is part of, of our uh, strategy at different levels because we will not replace uh, 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 big solutions that are already on the market. We will connect with these solutions because the fuel networks, some of them will make the calculation of the credits or the, the position of the customer in a specific uh, loyalty map and so on. So we can connect to existing systems but uh, there are other solutions that we could also uh, propose to, to the customers, to, to the fuel retailers, to help them to uh, have a, a recurrent access to the customers and a recurrent use of the service in their own stations. Okay. And then there comes another question is, who owns the, the user? Is it you or is it your client? Let's say the retailers who own the user. That's, that's oh, that. well. No, the the, the user. It's it's clear. I mean, it's, uh, uh, the users are communities are you know the, the property of the community, which solves a lot of issues. Huh, by the way, I mean think GDPR etc. You know, I mean that that resolve a lot of things. So, um, but the the so the property is with the the community. But what we are doing, uh, and Fred touched upon that earlier, is that we are basically creating you know uh, mini ecosystems or at least you know, strong uh, partnership, you know, strong uh, ties in between the community and the few re retailers. Uh, when when Fred talked about segmenting the clients, I mean, that's what Belfuse has done, you know, and then so that Lucoil could uh, 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 target only the clients who were going to the other uh, fuel stations on the, or, or, the, or uh, the fuel, the, 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 the stations that they were visiting was, were not known. So, uh, uh, so there's there's a there's a strong tie between the three partners into the equation, and that's 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 uh, that, that's what ensures success, I would say. So we don't need to to have the the to own sort of the end users. What we need is to uh, is to uh, multiply the number of communities that we can put on a larger network. That's really strategically what we have to do. And, and maybe uh, an additional comment is uh, is that the the communities they spent years and probably a lot of money to gain the number of customers they have. So we can't say, okay, you are using our service, so they become also our customers, and then they will also become the customers of the fuel retailers. The goal is to allow these drivers to remain owned by the community, but to be reachable by the, by the fuel retailers without having data transfers, because that would uh, empty slowly the community value, because actually everyone will go, will flow from one end to the other. But a few retailers with the own app, he can do it, but you, you, you see also in this case, if I want to have 500,000 customers or 1 million customers, it will cost me a lot of money because people have to download this app. And when we come with maybe 1 million users from, from one community and we meet them, actually they have the direct access. They don't know the customer, but they have a, a, a pack of, of 1 million customers they could deal with which is also something that helps to make a decision on the, on the fuel retailer side. There's now, um, I've taken the last questions now, because <clears throat> it's a fireside chat and it's short and concise. So the other thing, uh, there's a question coming, okay. Do you think that, or are, are there plans or is the road might eventually to diversify and in, into other industries, into other verticals other than fuel? Uh, if it's a secret, you don't have to tell it. <laughs> if it's not in the roadmap, just say it's not on the road. No, I think the first diversification will definitely be the, 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 the type of fuel itself. Um, because obviously we are only uh, serving fossil fuel for the moment because that's 98% of the uh, uh, combustion engine that are on the road. It's not because we are ugly people, you know, who love uh, uh, oil. It's simply because there is no business model on electricity or EV charging at, at present. And uh, there too, we've seen the evolution of those myriad of companies that went belly up because there is no business model for, for EV charging or it's consolidating, it's giant, but they are still not, you know, struggling to make money. So uh, for us, once we win the uh, uh, the battle of the size, the volume, so lots of stations, lots of users, uh, and if it is confirmed that the electricity is the future, 
which I am far from convinced, by the way, but that's a longer discussion. Um, the uh, uh, so then electricity will be added to us. So so that's that's the diversification in itself. Obviously, the B two B segment is a diversification in itself for us, even if it is under the same principles. There are other other possibilities or the need for payment in a vehicle uh, in the future, and uh, you know, should we get involved into that? Maybe we'll look at that when times comes, but for the moment it would be a distraction. So we just want to be focused 110% on, uh, on 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 our strategic goal in three years, 30,000 stations and millions of users using uh, Carpenia. Yeah, that, that's really it. It's, it's avoiding to, to be distracted. Uh, in, in my previous uh, company, we, we were trying to reach, the, as I said, pharmacy, parking, restaurant, everything. But actually, you, you only go on, on the surface. Uh, here, we want to be the one that succeed in the in the fuel, and we need to be focused there because the market is so 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 huge that uh, it's it's surely enough to 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 make a, a big success. Okay, I just uh, two last questions from the floor. I uh, got now is one uh, is going back in the beginning, and one is now for the future. Going back a little bit, uh, would you say that you had already some experience before starting this venture, before uh, starting Carpe Diem, uh, and even a successful one, uh, was, uh, let's say so, an advantage in order to get it started, to get it from the ground, to get the funding and the support, the resources. And then also a little bit about the timing that what, what that you did it very quickly after the finishing of the, the, your previous venture. Uh, that is the question is a little bit, one may say, okay, being having done it, is that an advantage for starting the venture, a new venture? And on the other hand, also having done it, having just finished off something and then between quotation mark in due time, starting something new, uh, also help that you could uh, would get the, the support and the assistance. That's uh, the question, in fact. Um, I, I will answer for my part. Um, it is clear that the, the previous experience that was Flash is the mobile payment solution, where actually we, we, we made it, but it was not a, a huge success, um, and, and it stopped uh, at the end, was clearly a, a very good experience for the next one, which is Carpedium. Uh, after the, 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 the end of this business, I, uh, it, it took me a few months to understand what was not okay in what in the strategy we took in the in the in the complete market we, we had go to market and so on, and and I, I, I have a list of of, of of things that 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 shows that actually it was impossible to succeed, but you don't you never take the time to 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 step back and say okay if I do this no that can't work but. When you are only focused, you, you don't see it anymore. So for me, yes, the answer is this previous experience helped a lot. Uh, but as I said at the start, it, even with this experience, it was not enough because there are many things that I can do, but there are also many things that I can't do. Um, and so uh, it is important to have experience, but also uh, the appropriate uh, collaboration, partnership. Yeah, and, and from from my end, I'm more more the type of entrepreneur, meaning, you know, that I've I've uh, either joined companies or worked in the companies and took over business units, you know, those ugly little ducks that are basically losing money all over, and turned them into nice things and 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 sold them to private equity even, even twice for some of them, and uh, so so and and obviously experienced the entire cycle, uh, like from taking a, a business. And selling it or buying businesses, so that's that's very important. But the key the key message here, you know, because if you uh, think about the questions and, and probably the, the 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 reasoning, the rational behind the question is, if you don't have a uh, a skill, and and which is not ob obvious to acquire, go get it elsewhere. Don't try to acquire by yourself because. Well, you can, but you will lose time, you will lose opportunity, and you might you might fail in the end. So key skills are absolutely key to 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 either have or acquire. You know, get into your venture. 
so so you go as fast as you can and with the little risk as possible thank you very much that was it for the Freya side chat uh, as we also said uh, startup grind is about helping first and uh, or, or giving first is is there something you would say that the startup grind community i mean in the whole huh, uh, could assist you if uh, there's nothing it's not a problem but uh, now top of your head is there something you would say oh, okay it uh, would be nice uh, if we could achieve that or reach that goal and eventually one in the startup grind community would be able to assist you or uh, eventually to give you that, that step or for example saying okay i would like to have a a ticket for now the concerts are not existing anymore so but is there something you would say okay it's something i would like but i don't have the time or not able to get it is there something can there be can there be crazy answers to that of course it <laughs> should be it should. i'd love to have your hair steve <laughs> I can give you the secret of topic. <laughs> can anyone help? <laughs> and by the way, uh, I love the, the way it's been set up as well, right? You know, it looks like the, <laughs> the Morse letter, like R, oh, hair, you know, it's like the dot, dash, dot, hair. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much. So, uh, first, I would like to thank you for having played the game, uh, Frédéric and Alain, and also to all you grinders out there, thank you for having joined us and wishing you still um, a good day, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Thank you very much. Stay safe and hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Funding Month, presented with Oracle for Startups and American Express, recognizes the stories, lessons learned, and best practices shared by founders and funders around the world.